Hello everyone and welcome back to the Kohi Game Engine series. Today we're going to tackle command buffers. Really quick though, I would like to take a quick second and thank the partners of the channel, AR Slayer and Wen Shang. The partner is the highest tier of supporter on the channel. And so I just wanted to say thank you to our partners as well as our other supporters that are listed here on the screen. So if you're interested in supporting the channel, there are a couple ways to do that now. First off, I have channel memberships available. You can access that by clicking the join button below this video. I'll also provide a link to a video that I have describing the memberships. And I also have a Patreon page, which is patreon.com forward slash Travis Roman. Thank you all very much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. So before we jump in, I want to cover something really quickly. So I noticed that this person had actually put in a pull request to fix an issue that they found uh, that I had missed in a previous video. And so uh, first and foremost, I wanna say thank you for this, but the issue that they found was basically adding an event handler for WM close, which is why the close button wasn't working, um, simply because I forgot to actually go in there and, and actually add it. So in the platform win32.c, uh, they added a reference to core event and then fired off an event to quit out the application returning true, which is uh, actually something I had marked here as a to-do item and just forgot to go back and actually take care of. So um, this is pretty much the exact code I had um, in mind to do it. So I've gone ahead and accepted this pull request. Um, into the application. So thank you very much for that. Uh, if there is anything that you guys ever see that uh, is something easy to fix like this and you feel like you want to contribute to the code base, uh, I am always open to that and I appreciate uh, any of those types of things. So thank you very much for this and if you guys see anything feel free to put in a pull request and uh, you know depending on the situation I may approve it or ask you for additional changes but we'll We'll get it merged in if you have contributed something. So anyway, let's go ahead and move on. So last time in the last video, we created our render pass and throughout the render pass code, we actually had references to a command buffer. And we mentioned that the command buffer is something that we would sort of tackle in the next video, which is this one. So I want to talk about command buffers real quick and what they are, why we need them and how they work. So Vulkan actually uses something called commands and commands are functions which provide various functionality uh, such as draw calls and uh, things of that nature that are fed into a command buffer, which is you can think of as sort of a set of commands. And then those commands are then fed into the appropriate queue, which we obtain from the GPU to be executed. So all of this is done in a very asynchronous manner and it allows us to sort of batch things up and then submit it all to the GPU at once to be executed in a very efficient manner. And so we have these command buffers, but command buffers aren't something that you can just sort of create uh, on your own, right? They are actually allocated and they are allocated from something called a command pool. So a command pool is something that we'll have to create. And basically what that is, is it is a pre-allocated pool of command buffers that we can take any that are not currently being used from. So uh, we can set up a pool saying, you know, we have X number of command buffers we want to be available. And then every time we need one, we can pull from that pool. And then every time we are done with uh, a particular command buffer, if we're not gonna reuse it, for something else, we can actually put it back in the pool for something else to then pick up. So what we're gonna do today is we're going to create the command buffers, but we're also going to create our command pools. So uh, with all of that, let's go ahead and dive in. So last time we actually had created our structure for our command buffer and our command buffer state. So I kinda wanna jump into uh, what all of this means Command buffers can have multiple states and some states can only transition to a different state from another state. And all of this state is actually maintained internally by Vulkan. But we also want some manner of being able to track this externally within the application to be able to do things like error checking, right? To make sure that we're not doing things out of order. 
And at first we're not really going to make heavy use of this stuff, but we are going to come back and do a stability pass at some point and we're going to want these things. So what we're going to do for now is basically just set the state as the command buffer kind of goes through its various states and then uh, we'll worry about checking them later. So our various states actually start at the bottom here, which is not allocated. So when we actually create a command buffer, its initial state is actually set to not allocated because a command buffer handle must be allocated from a pool. Once that happens, we switch to ready. This means that the command buffer is in a state where we can transition to a recording state. And recording state is basically at the point where we are able to issue commands to the command buffer. So the command buffer records all of these commands to be submitted later, okay? And then once we're done recording, we need to end the recording, which is basically what this state here, this recording ended is for. And then once we are in a recording ended state, we can actually submit for execution. So once we submit the queue for execution, it is submitted until such time that the command buffer has been completely executed and all of its commands have been executed, in which case we go back to ready. Now there is one more state here for in render pass. This is specifically for command, command buffers that are used with render passes. This is something extra that we're tracking, right? So that is what all these various states are for. So hopefully it gives you some sort of an idea as to the uh, life cycle of these command buffers. All right, so to get started, we're going to create a new file and we're gonna call it Vulkan command buffer.h. As you might expect, it takes Vulkan types INL. And the very first thing we want to do is, as I mentioned, we're going to want an allocation. Remember, we don't create command buffers, we allocate them from a command pool. Okay, so we take our Vulkan context, we take the pool that we want to allocate from, and then uh, we have this Boolean here uh, is primary. I'll explain that in a little bit as to what that is. And then we have uh, the out command buffer here, which is actually what writes out to our command buffer. Okay, and this actually fills in the handle and the state. Okay, so that's what the allocate does. So anytime you have an allocate, just like in C itself, you must have a free. So what this does is it basically frees the command buffer that's passed here to go back to the pool. So it technically doesn't release the resource from memory. It just returns it to this pool for something else to pick up and then use, okay? So that's all this one does. Now, I mentioned back here in the command buffer state that we have this process of recording. So we have a begin recording and an end recording that we need to flip these uh, current states, right? And so once we've begun recording, then we can start issuing commands and then we need to end recording before submitting, okay? And so we need something to say, we are going to begin a buffer. And we're gonna just call that begin instead of writing out begin recording because it's kind of obvious, right? So we have a Vulkan command buffer begin where you obviously pass the command buffer. And then uh, we've got some Booleans here, which is uh, something that I'm going to cover uh, in a few minutes. But uh, these are something that we're going to, to sort of pass as additional information for how this buffer is actually gonna be used, okay? As you might imagine, since we have a command buffer begin, we also have a command buffer end, which just simply takes the command buffer itself. We have a call to update the command buffer to a submitted state, which does pretty much exactly what you think it does. And then uh, the we also have another call uh, for command buffer reset, which resets it back to the ready state. Okay, and then there are gonna be many times when we need to use a command buffer once basically and then essentially throw it away, right? There are gonna be lots of, of operations where um, we don't necessarily need to hold on to the command buffer. We basically allocate it, uh, we, we begin, we record in a lot of cases just a single command to it and then we go ahead and submit it for execution and then we don't care about it, we can release it right away. And so what we're gonna call those is a single use command buffer. And so this is just a shortcut for all of those steps. So basically this is just a command buffer allocate and begin single use, okay? And what this is gonna do is it's going to perform this allocation step and this begin step, 
okay? And uh, it's basically gonna record those in one shot. And then since we have that, we will have a counterpart to actually be able to end it, which is end single use, which uh, basically does this bit and then submits it. And that is the interface for command buffers. Not a whole heck of a lot, um, but we just wanna keep this as easy to work with on the surface as possible, right? So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new file and we're gonna call it Vulcan command buffer.c. And this one, of course, is gonna use our command buffer h and we also need our k memory. And the k memory is just because we actually need uh, zeroing out capability, okay? So the first thing we're gonna fill out is our command buffer allocate. And as with a lot of things in Vulkan, we need a info structure. So VK command buffer allocate info, and here is the S type for that. And all we do is basically fill this out with the command pool that we pass. And then we have something here called level, right? And we're looking at this to say, if is primary is true, then it's a primary level buffer. Otherwise, it's a secondary level buffer. So a secondary buffer is a command buffer that can be used within another command buffer. It can't be used on its own. And there will be circumstances where we'll probably want to do this in the future. So I wanna go ahead and build this in now so that we don't have to come back in and refactor it later. But uh, at least for the foreseeable future, we're only really gonna be using primary buffers, okay? And so uh, you actually have the capability to allocate more than one command buffer at a time. Uh, however, we're just gonna stick to one. I may add a function here that allows us to create more than one at a time, but for now, um, we're just gonna create one. And then I'm explicitly setting the P next here to zero because we are not using it, okay? Which is technically done by this, but again, just trying to be explicit. So actually right before this, the first thing that I wanna do before we even do this is we actually want to zero out the out command buffer memory. Uh, and that is just because uh, we want to make sure that everything in uh, this structure is, is properly zeroed out. And then we're going to go ahead and set its default state to not allocated, right? Because we haven't actually allocated it yet. Next, we're going to call VK allocate command buffers. And you'll notice this is plural. This is where this particular buffer count uh, comes into play, right? And so uh, the way that this works is it takes the logical device, the allocation info, and then it actually takes a VK command buffer pointer to a array of command buffers, right? So in this case, our handle is also a pointer. So technically this is a double pointer uh, because we are only dealing with one buffer here. Uh, we're just gonna pass the address of the handle, okay? And once that is successfully done, then we go ahead and flip the state to ready so that we know that it's ready to be recorded to. And that's all there is for uh, allocation. Next is free, which I'm just going to paste the entire thing. So again, we take the context pool and command buffer, and this just calls VK free command buffers. Again, this is plural, so it can take more than one. We pass it the device, the pool, the count to actually be uh, freed, which in this case is just one. Again, if we do more than one, we'll, we'll need to add something to accommodate that. And then again, because this can be an array, we pass the address of the handle. We then zero out the handle and reset the state back to not allocated, just in case that we happen to uh, access this object somewhere else, okay? And that's, that's really all there is to that. Uh, that's the allocate and free. So the next thing is our command buffer begin. And very similar to everywhere else, we have a begin info that we have to fill out, right? And in this case, uh, the begin info is actually pretty straightforward, right? All it takes is the S type, a P next, which we're not using, and then flags and inheritance info, which we're also not gonna be using, okay? And so uh, the flags is really the only interesting thing here that we're, we're gonna be filling out, okay? And of course the S type, which we have here. So we're gonna start off by setting the begin info flags to zero, right? But then depending on these Booleans right here, we are going to set some flags. So I'm just going to paste in the logic here. So if single use 
then we basically or onto it this one-time submit bit, right? So if we're just using it once, then we can actually tell Vulkan, hey, this is gonna be used once and we're never gonna use it again. Uh, if it's a render pass continue buffer, then uh, we can actually set a bit to describe that. And then if it's simultaneous use, there is a bit to describe that. So what do all these things mean? Well, let's go and check the handy dandy spec. So here are the three usage bits that we've already sort of covered, okay? So one time submit bit says that each recording in the command buffer will only be submitted once. In other words, you can't record to it and submit it a bunch of times. Um, and then uh, it will be reset uh, and recorded to again in each submission. So in most cases, this will wind up being true for us. Uh, the render pass continue says that a secondary command buffer is considered to be entirely inside a render pass. If it's a primary buffer, then this is ignored. So in most cases, we're not gonna be using this unless we have a secondary buffer that's inside a render pass, in other words. And by inside a render pass, it means, if you recall, the render pass can be begun and ended just like a command buffer. Uh, so that is what it means by inside a render pass, okay? And then simultaneous use bit says that the buffer can be resubmitted to a queue while it is in pending state. So the pending state is basically not submitted yet, okay? And so um, it could be recorded into multiple primary command buffers. Basically, if you wanna use the same command buffer across multiple queues, you could, you could use this for that if you wanted to do that. We're not gonna be doing that, but I want uh, the capability to do that anyways. Okay, so that's the flags. Um, as I mentioned, the P inheritance info and the P next are zero. So I'm not going to bother setting those because those are zeroed out here. And then we make a simple call to VK begin command buffer. And this guy just takes the handle and the begin info that we have set up. And then of course, since we've begun that, we want to go ahead and flip the state over to recording, right? Because now we are actually ready to record commands. And uh, we'll see an example of that coming up in a video very shortly here. But that is all there is to begin. Now the end is actually super simple. All it does is call VK end command buffer and flip the state to recording ended. Now we should probably arguably check to see if we're in a state um, where ending is actually valid. But for now, we're just gonna allow it to crash um, if that's the case, just so that it's very obvious what we did. Um, but eventually when we go to, to do a stability pass, we're going to want to do some checking here. Okay, update submitted just flips the state to submitted, right? This is just a quick and easy way for us to do this. We could do it externally, but um, again, we may want to do some additional checking here in the future, so I've wrapped it in a function. The same is actually true with reset, where it basically resets it back to a ready state. Again, we probably will do some checking here in the future um, to make sure that it's actually in a valid state to transition to that. Okay, so the last two functions are actually pretty straightforward as well. So we have the begin, uh, allocate and begin single use that we talked about. And when I said it was a shortcut um, for some of these functions at the top, I wasn't kidding because it literally just calls those things, right? Um, however, it does make some assumptions. So um, when we allocate the command buffer, uh, we are hard coding is primary to true right? Because single use buffers are almost always going to be primary. So we're making that assumption, right? So obviously we don't need to take in the Boolean for that. We're also not taking in the Boolean for uh, single use, render pass continue, and simultaneous use, right? Because we know those things are most likely going to be uh, true, false, and false respectively, right? So we make some assumptions here just to make this call a little bit easier on the surface. So when we have a command buffer that we want to just use uh, for a single operation, we can just call this, pass it the context pool and out command buffer and boom, we're done. Okay, now the last one is to end the single use buffer. And this actually contains a little bit more than you think that it might. Okay, so we're gonna walk through this a little at a time. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna end the command buffer, right? Pretty self-explanatory. But the thing that it does after this is it actually submits the queue as well. Okay, um, and so it, it submits it to the queue rather. So we need a VK submit info filled out. 
and we're saying we have one buffer and here is the buffer which is the handle right and then we call vkq submit passing it one buffer here's the uh, submit info for that buffer and then uh, this fence right here uh, is optional we're not actually going to use a fence for this um, if we had something that relied on this operation having to complete before we would move on to something else then we could potentially pass a fence here but I'm not going to do that for right now okay so this is how we submit a command buffer to a queue it's actually really straightforward okay now since I'm not using a fence here what I'm actually going to do instead of using a fence is I'm going to wait for it to finish so I'm going to use this VKQ wait idle and pass the queue to say wait for this queue to be finished executing the commands uh, in this command buffer because right after we're done with that we actually want to free the command buffer but we can't free the command buffer while it's being used so this right here is a wait and that's fine um, we are only doing it in within the context of this so generally with a, um, a single use command buffer there's not like really super heavy operations that have to be done here so it's usually relatively quick certainly not enough to hold the application up in most circumstances um, if you needed something more robust than this, you probably would not use um, this. And you might use maybe a fence or something um, elsewhere. Okay. But that is the Vulkan command buffer. That's really all there is to it. There's not uh, a lot of complexity here. Thankfully, it's actually pretty straightforward stuff. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is in the back end, we need to hook all this stuff up. So what I'm going to do is go to our Vulkan backend and go all the way to the top. And I'm going to include Vulkan command buffer.h. And then here also at the top, I'm going to create a new private function. And I'm actually going to put it right here. So right above initialize called create command buffers. And this is just gonna sort of wrap all of that functionality up for us, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to come down here in our initialize. And after the render pass, I'm going to go ahead and create our command buffers. All right, and we just pass the back end along to that, okay? Then we're gonna go all the way to the bottom of the file after our find memory index, we are going to define our create command buffers down here. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put something into our context to actually hold our command buffers. And note that I said command buffers plural. In our Vulkan context, uh, we'll put this we'll put this right here after the main render pass. We're actually going to have uh, an array of command buffers. And we're going to call these the graphics command buffers, right? Because these are going to be used for graphics commands. And we're, we're actually going to wind up having um, other command buffers that we're going to use as well, potentially. So that's why we're being explicit in calling these graphics command buffers, okay? And I'm denoting here that this is a D array because that's how we're going to set this up, okay? So back in our back end, we need to create our command buffers. Now, why do we have more than one? We need to actually create a command buffer for each one of our swap chain images, because if you recall, we do these things sort of asynchronously, right? So while we're presenting one of those images, we can be drawing to one or two of the other images. And so we actually need a separate command buffer for each one of those things because you can't be presenting with one while you're drawing to another, right? And using the same command buffer, at least not the way that we have this set up, right? So we're actually gonna use a different command buffer per uh, swap chain image. So the way we're gonna set that up is not too complicated. So if, if we do not currently have the uh, command buffers set up, meaning it's zero, which it will be by default, uh, then we go ahead and we create a D array of Vulkan command buffers and we create the swap chain image count number of them. Okay. 
So that's that's how we know how many we actually have to create. So if it's triple buffered, uh, we'll have three of those. Otherwise, if it's just double buffered, we'll have two. Okay, uh, and then uh, we just loop through those uh, indices and we actually just zero out the uh, memory for that. Next, in a separate loop below, we will actually loop through the swap chain image count again. And this is a separate loop because uh, if we ever have to recreate the command buffers for any reason, this section will already be done, so we don't actually have to do this, and we don't have to do this, but we will need to do this, okay? So the first thing that we do is we check to see if that current handle uh, actually exists, and if it does, then we call command buffer free. Pass it the context, the uh, device graphics command pool, which we do not have yet. We'll have to fill that in in a second. And then uh, the buffer uh, sub i, okay? And then we go ahead and zero the memory for that graphics command buffer sub i. And then here we go ahead and allocate a new one where we pass it again, the context, the command pool, which we'll do in a second. Uh, in this case, we are actually setting as primary to true because we know that this is always gonna be a primary command buffer. And then we pass it the address of the command buffer at sub i, okay? And uh, that is all there is as far as creating the command buffers. It's actually pretty straightforward. So uh, there is one more thing though, the graphics command pool is actually gonna be required. So uh, we're actually gonna go to our uh, device here, our Vulkan device, and right above our properties and below our transfer, um, or our different queues rather, we are gonna add a VK command pool, graphics command pool, okay? And so um, that means that uh, obviously we'll have to create a command pool uh, in our device, okay? So that is something we'll need to hook up real quick. So if we go to our Vulkan device C, and we go here to get device queue, we will actually need to create the command pool for the graphics queue um, immediately after this. So as you might expect to create a command pool, you actually have to use a create info for that. So we have that here. The queue family index in this case is going to use the graphics queue index, right? So it's saying that our command pools will need to actually use uh, this particular queue family, right? So we can't use it with another queue family. We have to use it with the same queues that came from this family, AKA our graphics queues that we obtained here, right? We couldn't use it with one of these other things unless the queues happen to actually match up. And there are ways around that, but for now we're just going to keep it um, explicit. So if we go back to the spec, we'll look up this VK command pool, reset command buffer bit, which is here. So it basically says that it allows any command buffer allocated from a pool to be individually reset to the initial state. In other words, we can explicitly call reset command buffer, or it's implicitly called by begin command buffer, right? So we want that flexibility, so we need to set that bit, okay? So there's our create info. And as you might expect, we have a call to something called VK create command pool. Pass it the device, the create info, the allocator, and the address of our command pool, okay? And now that we have that, we'll go ahead and also output a message saying that our graphics command pool has been created. So now that we have that, all hooked up, we should be able to go ahead and in our back end, see that this is all fixed, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and build. And it looks like I forgot something, K0 memory. Oh, it looks like I forgot to include memory here at the top. So I'll just add that there, build again. Everything built successfully, let's go ahead and run. So it looks good so far, we have our queues. Here's our graphics command pool uh, created. We actually didn't uh, output anything for creating our command buffers. So we might do that just so that we can actually see that. Let me do that real quick. So we go back to initialize and I'm actually just gonna copy this guy, come down here. Actually, I'll copy this one. And I'll come down here to, actually I'll do it in create command buffers and say, Vulcan command buffers created. Let's rebuild and run. Move these up. 
And now we see Vulcan command buffers are created. I did that as debug instead of info, I'll have to change that. But uh, we see that we have um, all those things created. If we look at our debug console, uh, I do not see any validation errors anywhere in here either. So we can go ahead and close this and take a look down here. And it looks like we actually have some validation errors. So what did we miss? This is a good example of how the validation uh, layers can actually help us. And I think I actually know what the problem is, but uh, so it's basically telling us that uh, when we destroy the device, that a command buffer that was used by that device has not been destroyed, right? Uh, so we have the three command buffers that we created were not destroyed, right? Because we didn't actually call a destroy. And then we have our command pool, which was also um, not destroyed. And then it says all child objects created on the device must have been destroyed prior to destroying the device, right? So um, this is a perfect example of why we want to output this information is to check for stuff like this, okay? And so that is because in our device, we destroy our logical device, but we do not destroy our command pools. So we actually need to go ahead and destroy our command pool, okay? So that will fix that. And then so the next thing we we'll want to do is go back to our back end and go into our shutdown. And right here at the top, we'll need to destroy our command buffers. So we will uh, loop through that going by the image count. Um, if it has a handle, then we'll call Vulcan command buffer free on that, passing of course the relevant objects needed. And then we'll go ahead and zero out the handle just to be sure. And then after that, of course, since the command buffers is actually a D array, we'll actually need to destroy it as well. Okay, and then we will also set that to zero just for good measure. Okay, and let's go ahead and build this one more time and run. So the application starts up as we expect. And we'll go here, check out our debug. We don't have any errors in here. And then we will go into our window here and just kill that. And we'll see here that we're destroying all of this stuff, shutting down, and we no longer have those validation errors. So that is pretty much it for the command buffers. Uh, not a whole lot to it. Thankfully, command buffers are a pretty simple concept once you can wrap your head around how they actually work. Next, uh, we are going to create our, our synchronization objects, so our, our fences and our semaphores. And then we're also probably in the same video gonna go ahead and create our frame buffers. And then from there, we'll go ahead and tie everything together in our render loop and actually get clearing to the screen. So we're actually getting closer and closer to clearing the screen. Um, I know that this is a lot of overhead, but I promise you guys we're almost there. So anyway, uh, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you uh, are enjoying this series. I hope you learned. And if you like the video, please toss it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, consider subscribing and hit the little bell notification there to get notified as to when the next video in this series drops. And I will see you guys next time.